Hey everybody, welcome back. These entitled exes had nothing but the audacity. Am I the a-hole for canceling a vacation because my wife can't pay her share after helping her adult son and ex-husband? The what? The what? My wife, 44 female, makes quite a bit less than me, 45 male. So our joint expenses are split 70-30. For the most part, things like vacations and where we bought a house are decided based on what she can afford. But there have been several times I've paid in full for vacations to places I really enjoy and wanted to share the experience with her. She has a 23-year-old son from her previous marriage. When she and I got together, I told her I wouldn't mind paying extra for things here and there until her son was 18 and working or in school so she could take care of him. For the majority of our relationship, he has lived with his father. He decided against college or trade school and hasn't expressed any interest in starting to figure out a plan for the immediate future, let alone his life. 23... I mean, I didn't really figure things out when I was 23, but that's also not the new husband's responsibility. It's his dad's responsibility and his mom's responsibility. He floats from job to job and his father is pretty much the same since the kid graduated. Therein lies the problem. Every few months, they'll call her for a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred there, 20 bucks this week, 80 the next. Sometimes it's her son calling for help. Sometimes it's her ex-husband. This has caused her to be short on funds for our plans or things she volunteered to cover on more than one occasion. Ooh, yeah. That sucks. I mean, he is 23. Like, he is an adult now. And, like, after a certain point, you really gotta stop asking your parents. But, Mom? It's one thing if you're really, really struggling. But if you don't want to go to school and you can't keep a job, if you keep going to your parents and asking for money, you're never gonna learn that you need to start standing on your own two feet. Her reasoning when it's her ex asking is that since her son lives with him, she has to help him. I get that to a point. Just because she was married at one point, that does not mean she has to give her ex any money whatsoever. Sad. Unless she legally has to pay child support, but you don't pay child support after after they're 18. Grow up! We were supposed to go on a vacation later this month. Nothing major or fancy, but just time away. We agreed to split the costs, and all that was left to pay for were the hotels, rental car, and some reservations. Her ex-husband called needing help, getting his car out of impound, and getting caught up on rent. Rent. Their son hasn't been able to get work without the car because he doesn't want to ride a bike or take a bus. What? Okay, yeah, maybe you don't want to ride the bus or bike because you've gotten accustomed to driving. But when other people can't afford to drive or can't drive for some reason, they walk, they take the bus, or they ride a bike. Almost five grand later, they're set up, but my wife told me she can't pay for her portion of our vacation. Wow. So I told her I was canceling it. Well, I mean, I'm trying to be understanding here. I am trying to be understanding. She called me a heartless a that she's just taking care of her son and we've been arguing over it. But my stance is they're both able-bodied adults that keep making a series of life decisions that keep them at a standstill. Like quitting jobs over little things, smoking, going out. And her always digging them out of their hole is starting to impact our lives more and more. And I didn't sign up for that. Am I the a-hole for canceling our vacation instead of just footing the entire cost myself? Honestly, I don't understand why she expected you to just cover the entire cost of the vacation because she wanted to help out her ex-husband and her son. I understand wanting to help out her son, but the ex-husband? Absolutely not. To clarify, she contributes 30% of her pay to our joint expenses, bills, utilities, emergency fund, retirement. 70% of her pay she keeps for her personal expenses and to spend or save how she wishes. Dates, vacations, and fun things we choose to do together are budgeted and planned based on what we can afford from our personal funds. Pool that money together, then pay together. It sounds like you've got a pretty decent system set up, especially with the whole like earnings discrepancy. And I think it's a reasonable thing for you to do to put your foot down and say, I'm not footing the bill anymore. If she wants to spend her money how she wants and to help out her ex-husband, even though I don't like that, or to help out her son, that I understand. If you want to help out your kids and they're in a tough spot, I understand that. But then expecting you to make up the cost of a vacation that now she can't afford because she keeps helping out her ex-husband and her son, that 
that's not fair to you. I think that she needs to learn that you also can't come to her rescue when she needs to spend money on other people. Not the a-hole. Why are you married to her since she clearly puts her ex and grown son before you and your marriage? She's enabling their financial irresponsibility and that will never change. I mean, she is kind of putting their needs, and I say that lightly, above your needs. I really fail to understand how she's not just simply telling her ex-husband to f OP is subsidizing the ex through a financial polycule. A what? Yeah, I would have a very big problem if I found out that my partner was giving his ex money. If he was not legally obligated to give his ex money, I would have a serious problem with that. I understand helping out her son, but the ex is just ridiculous. Honestly, I feel like the ex is just kind of talking through the son. Like every time the son asks, I don't know, I feel like the dad is somewhere there telling him to call his mom. There's no need to keep paying for him and she's enabling him and her son. OP's not the a-hole and his wife agreed to pay her share before going on the holiday and spent above her budget knowing this. Case closed. Seriously, this has been going on for more than five years. There's no reason for the ex or the son to change their patterns because she's enabling it and she also has a pattern too. Let's not forget that. OP, your wife is reasoning she has to give the money because she's taking care of her son. Okay, that I understand, again, but not the ex-husband. Like, what the actual fuck? Stop that. Stop taking care of your exes. Don't give your exes money. Ever. I'm not legally obligated to do so. Can you get her into marriage counseling so she can understand the fact that she isn't helping her son? She is hurting him. Period. No, I totally agree with that. Constantly coming to the rescue only teaches him that he can't ever figure it out on his own. Like, he's an adult now and he's gonna have to learn that, like, mommy's not coming to the rescue all the time anymore. He has the capability to work and support himself. He's choosing not to because he doesn't have to with her as his safety net. He's already 23. The window to retain is closing rapidly and soon he will be a copy of his dad. Ooh, period. That's what's up. Her ex is not her responsibility under any circumstances. If he's careless and gets his car impounded, leading to the son not getting work, that is an issue to solve between father and son. She does not need to fix this for them. And also, her son can take the bus or bike or walk to work. He doesn't need a car to get to work. Can confirm, as someone who still does not drive, <laughs> Dear Lord. but I, I also just have to like go into my studio to work. But when I didn't, when I worked somewhere else. That sounded naughty. I walked and I took the bus and I took the subway and I got there any way I could because I actually couldn't drive. So can confirm if you don't drive, you can get your ass on the bus and get to work. You're not the a-hole, my dear. Am I the a-hole for asking my ex-wife to stop making my kids jealous and flaunting? Shush! is wrong with her? So I've, male 38, been divorced from my ex-wife, female 35, after 10 years. And we have two kids together, male 12 and male 10. I remarried a year late while she's still single. I have three further kids, female nine, female seven, and female three. That's enough though, right? I have my sons over every weekend. About four years, my ex-wife opened up an online business and she's been making six figures. While my wife is a stay-at-home mom and I make 30K to support our family. So you can imagine how this difference has affected our two households. They live in a gated community. She drives a 2022 RSQ3 and she and her sons go on two extravagant holidays a year, but that's her money so she can spend it how she wants. And it's also a good thing that she's spending it on your kids together too. My sons came over this weekend, started telling me and the girls that they're going on a Disney concierge cruise in the summer. My daughter has started crying saying, daddy, we want to go. And when I looked online for the prices, they're priced at $5,000 a person. Okay. Yeah. I could see how that's a difficult thing to explain to your children why they can't go. Because we're poor? But it's also not your ex-wife's fault that she's earning money, that she started a business and she earned money. It's been all they've been talking about nonstop. I feel like their wealth is being shoved down our throats when we can barely afford heating this Christmas. Listen, this is a really stupid take, okay? I feel like we throw around this idea of people like flaunting their wealth when they're literally just living their lives. She's not necessarily flaunting her wealth, she's spending the money that she's making on your children. She's trying to give them a good life. I sympathize with the fact that you guys can barely afford heating this Christmas, but that isn't your wife's fault. It's not your fault either, but you can't blame it on other people. It's hard to not be hateful, but I've sent her a long text saying, stop trying to make us feel less than. I don't think that she's trying to make you feel less than. I think that she's just trying to give your kids, the ones you have together, a good life and great opportunities. Just because someone exists and they have 
more money does not mean that they're trying to shove it in anyone's faces. It sounds like you're just a bit resentful of her. I also told my sons in private, please don't mention holidays or gifts around the girls. I think that that is a better way to go about this than to tell your ex-wife that she's shoving it down your throats. Kids won't necessarily understand why, you know, the stepchildren or the half siblings get something that they don't. She replied with saying it's not her problem how we feel and when she does nice things for the boys, I agree with her. Me and my wife are the last people on her mind. Am I reading into this too much or am I the a-hole for saying that she's spiteful? I think that you're kind of spiteful, honestly. Like, how would you feel if she was making all this money and not spending it on your, your children that you have together? You would call her stingy or cheap or, you know, like you just can't, you're not entitled to her money and you're not entitled to tell her that she can't spend it how she likes on your children. You're the a-hole. She's doing nothing wrong. Me and my wife are the last people on her mind. Of course you are. What else would you expect? She's not considering your feelings when she buys a cruise for your kids to go and have fun over the summer. She's good to her kids. Good parenting. You are of no concern to her except that you are a parent to her kids. Or am I the a-hole for saying she's spiteful? Yes, you are. <laughs> you are. Like, she leave her alone. Holy mother of projection, Batman. <laughs> your ex-wife is doing well for herself and wants to treat her children well. And you aren't a part of the equation here. Stop being spiteful yourself and be better for your kids. You're the a-hole. That's what's up. You are the a-hole, my dear. Check yourself. Am I the a-hole for telling my ex-wife I don't care if she and her family starve and that I'm just responsible for our sons? Blah, blah, blah. I have two sons aged 16 and 14 with my ex-wife. Our marriage reached a bitter end when I learned she remained married to me for over three years. So I would support her through returning to school so she could switch careers to an even better paying one. Oh, despite her old one paying as much as mine. For years, I tried like hell to save our marriage because I felt it fracture. She played along until she got what she wanted and then she was honest that she never wanted to save our marriage and had been over me for years. That's tough. Oh, absolutely not. What the actual hell is going on? How could you honestly say that out loud? Like that, that's so funny. When we divorced, custody was set to 50-50 of our boys and she was ordered to pay child support to me because she was making so much more after her change of career and education. She remarried a year after our divorce and had more children. At the birth of her last child four years ago, things got bad. Here we go. Her husband was diagnosed with cancer. Then one of her kids got diagnosed with a long-term medical condition. Then COVID impacted her job. Our boys would tell me how rough things were at her mom's and how they wanted to live more with me. So I went to court and the judge moved her down to every other weekend and changed the child support order to reflect her decrease in custody. Okay, okay, and let me guess, she came to you for money after being a total dick to you. Right, right, right. Is that what happened? That's exactly what happened. Recently, she had to move into a smaller house because of how badly they were struggling, and then she came to me for help after the courts refused to end the child support payments. Oh, okay. I do feel like there needs to be a little bit of a change in child support if she's no longer out earning you. Is she out earning you still? She told me I needed to help her and that I should be helping to take care of my boy's family. No, no, no. She just maybe shouldn't be paying as much child support, if any. I told her she used me for three freaking years so she could survive off my money. She did not get to ask me for more to support a family that is not my own. So she's asking for you to not only pay for your own children, but also the children that she had with someone else? No. Absolutely not. She called me a selfish <laughs> told me her family is living off charity and they could be so much better if I would help them. I asked why I was supposed to care. She told me she wished she had cheated <laughs> while we were together and that using me for money wasn't enough. This yo, yo, she crazy though. Like what? Okay, this is not how you get someone to give you money, dude. <laughs> Honestly, the sheer audacity of like running to the person that you openly told that you were a horrible person to. Do you have zero pride? How are you not embarrassed doing that? And you're doing it again. You asked this man for money after using him and telling him that you used him. And now you're telling him that you wish you cheated on him? She told me about her family and how they would starve. I doubt that, but okay. I told her I didn't care if they did or did not. None of them are my problem and I only care about my kids. I mean, you could just get full custody of your kids and not have to deal with her anymore. Cause like, honestly, 
She called me an a-hole. Her husband sent me a text that night saying I was cruel and he hoped the boys would hate me when they realize I want their whole family to suffer. Okay, that's super emotionally manipulative. And my guess is they'll try to turn them against you. But again, like this is not your problem, babes. Like not in the slightest your problem. She could maybe play that card if she wasn't so horrible to you, but she's just shown time and time again that she's just a mean, spiteful person. And then she has the audacity to come to you for money. No. If you guys had a good relationship, at least oh, even then, you literally not paying for someone's kids that's not yours. <laughs> not the a-hole, but make sure that you have a high level conversation with your boys so that they're prepared for your ex and her husband to try and paint you as the root of all evil when they go over there. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. They're probably gonna do their best to manipulate them and make them feel like you're the reason why they're in that situation. This is why I'm saying like maybe it would be best if you had full custody. Better call Saul. In addition to this, keep all communications written. That's good advice for you too. So that they can get presented in court if necessary. Good luck to you and your kids. Yes, and also if you're keeping things in writing, just make sure that you don't also shoot yourself in the foot. Like, <laughs> Don't put anything in writing that's incriminating ever. Don't harass. Don't do anything that could hurt your case in court. She further insults him while trying to get him to give her money. Where is the logic? I can only imagine what she tells her kids about him. Honestly, like you just dumb as hell. She had it work one time. She felt entitled to the money because she got it one time and now she feels entitled to it again and you took it away and boohoo crying me. Sorrows, sorrows, prayers allow me to play the world's smallest violin. You are not the a-hole, my dear. Have a nice long chat with your kids. Make sure they're aware of the situation. Am I the a-hole for keeping an inheritance from my ex-husband's homophobic family? I, 33 female, married my childhood best friend, John, 33 male, when we were 22. I knew he was gay. Okay. Okay. And we decided to get married for several reasons. Taxes, convenience to keep his family from finding out, etc. I got along with his family who loved me. John had med school paid for by his family. I didn't have a job and instead became a full-time caretaker for for his maternal grandparents who, when we first got married, were 85 and 87 and were dealing with multiple health problems. John's family supported us both financially through John's medical training. Once John got his MD and finished residency three years ago, he decided to come out to his parents. Oh no. We got divorced. We decided against telling the family that I knew all along and John's parents cut him off completely when he moved in with his boyfriend, basically disowning him. I don't love that. His grandparents weren't told about him being being gay. Everyone was pretty much in agreement that it wasn't a good idea as they were quite fragile. Fragile? They were quite fragile. They were quite fragile physically and mentally at this point, but they knew we were divorced. And whereas John used to come and see his grandparents frequently because his parents had disowned him, John decided to pretty much limit contact with his entire family and never visited or called. Oh God. Let me guess. The grandparents left you money, didn't they? Sure did. On the other hand, I had been his grandparents' main caretaker for so long that I, one, didn't have any other career training to support myself and two, figured it would make sense for me to continue being their caretaker as they were rapidly declining and didn't want them to adjust poorly to a lot of new changes. I moved into his grandparents' home with them. While I was angry at John's parents for their treatment of him, I still loved his grandparents who had always been kind to me. When they passed within a few weeks of each other, his grandfather ended up willing almost their entire estate to me. About 12 million in assets. Whoa. Now's the time to share. John and his mom each received about 50 $50,000. Wow. Okay, that's a that's a big paycheck. <laughs> but I mean, fair enough if you're the one, the only one who took care of them when they were rapidly declining, if that's what I'm understanding. John and I discussed it and I felt it was fair that he received a higher proportion and that we were both happy and comfortable with how we divided it. His parents, on the other hand, had expected to receive the bulk of the inheritance and accused me of abusing his grandparents and manipulating them into willing almost everything to me with like kindness and care the parents go and take care of their parents or are they just pissed off that they're not getting an inheritance? Cause if they like weren't really involved in their lives at all toward the end, that would make me spiteful too. And I wouldn't leave any money to them either. <laughs> Apparently they made some business decisions, assuming they would receive the money. I mean, if it was their parents, then I guess assuming that would make sense, but like not if you weren't in their lives at all, especially toward the end. They also argued that they would have gone ballistic if they knew John was using their money to fund his 
his lifestyle. Oh yes, his massively gay, expensive lifestyle. I honestly hadn't thought of their will at all when they passed. It had never come up, but I feel John deserves the money after the way his parents treated him. And John tells me I deserve to be taken care of after I spend more than a decade of my life caring for his grandparents. Are we the a-holes for keeping the inheritance when his parents had made plans based on their assumptions of the inheritance? I mean, you should never make plans thinking that you're getting money without confirmation that you have the money. <laughs> a little financial advice. Not the a-hole plays stupid homophobic games, win stupid homophobic prizes. I mean, he's got a point. Weird leg 9584 has a point. And a weird leg. Even if John's parents were decent people, OP spent a decade caring for them and deserves whatever they felt was right to give to her, which in this case I agree with. She gave her 20s to them and was with them until the end. That is far more than John's mother can say she did for them in the last 10 years. Like, where through all of this were the parents and why is it that John's ex-wife, his name was John, right? Why is it that John's ex-wife had to take care of the grandparents? I just find it weird that they didn't take care of their parents toward the end. They left it to somebody else and now they're confused as to why they did not get any inheritance. I have a slightly different take along the same vein. I'm guessing the grandparents knew John is gay and knew of the falling out between John and his parents. They weren't happy with John's gayness, but nor were they happy with his parents' lack of unconditional love, hence why they only willed them $50,000 each. Yeah, I find it interesting that they didn't leave their children money. Like, why was the choice there? But then why didn't they give John more money, you know? OP was there for them. OP cared for them, and they gave OP all their money. OP is not the a-hole. Those 50k endowments to the parents are a legal trap to prevent them from disputing the will, as it proves that they were thought of by the descendants. The grandparents absolutely knew, not the a-hole. Oh, I that's an interesting take. As always, I want to know your thoughts, but for me, not the a-hole. Subscribe!